So new this morning, the absurd, not to mention offensive alternate reality devoid of facts that was created as search and rescue efforts were underway at the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Seen as Donnie O'Sullivan is with us this morning. You know why, Donnie? Just why? Yeah, John, look, I mean, by the time most of us woke up on Tuesday morning to that news of the collapse uh, of the bridge in Baltimore, there were already uh, wild conspiracy theories circulating online just hours after the event occurred. Uh, I want to show you a list quickly of just some of these totally false conspiracy theories just to show you how ridiculous they are. Um, initially, people were claiming that there was a foreign cyber attack on the on the ship, uh, making it deliberately crash into uh, the bridge, of course, which is false. There's absolutely no evidence for that. Um, another Another one was that a, the captain of the ship uh, was impaired in some way by the COVID-19 vaccine. Again, totally uh, false. Nothing happened with the captain. Um, others were claiming, uh, obviously, with anti-Semitic and anti-Ukraine um, undertones that Israel uh, or Ukraine were somehow responsible uh, for the attack. Uh, and also, it just kind of got a bit wilder and wilder after that. Uh, there was an Obama. The Obamas uh, produced a movie on Netflix uh, that had a tanker ship run aground in it, so therefore the Obamas had something to do with this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, th these conspiracy theories and this um, tragic event uh, was taken, uh, used as a political battering ram in our culture wars in this country at the moment, and people uh, decided to to blame DEI, uh, diversity uh, and inclusion policies, some way for uh, the crashing of this ship. It, what spreads these? Once these are posted, how do they get spread so quickly, Donnie? Yeah, I mean, that was the pretty remarkable thing is that, you know, we saw the numbers immediately on Tuesday morning and it was tens of millions of people saw these posts. Uh, it's very possible that tens of millions of Americans woke up on Tuesday morning and before they actually saw the news, before they actually saw the facts uh, of what happened uh, at in Baltimore, uh, they would have read some of these conspiracy theories. And I think, John, look, there's always been conspiracy theories about sort of any cataclysmic event uh, in the United States or around the world. Uh, but I think what is different about what we're seeing right now is just the speed uh, and also essentially just the volume uh, of conspiracy theories immediately uh, that will pop up basically on any event. I mean, we're talking about this today because obviously this is a huge story, the bridge collapse and, and the virality of these posts. But really the notable thing about this is how it is not extraordinary. Uh, there are There is an alternate reality, right, being created every day, whether it's Taylor Swift rigging the Super Bowl or whether it is the 2020 election being rigged uh, in favor of Joe Biden both of which uh, are false. But more and more Americans are living uh, in this world. Mm -hmm. And look, the people who are making this misinformation and disinformation are spreading it. They're being rewarded greatly because platforms like X, which formerly Twitter, now owned by Elon Musk, uh, pays in certain, ex in certain cases uh, for posts to go viral. And viral posts uh, can oftentimes be false and uh, scandalous and outlandish and, and false posts. Um, so there's just this whole industry there. And I think what really, uh, you know, we should take a step back uh, and and just see, like, this is the landscape that we're going into the 2024 mm -hmm. election. Um, and you can just see how well oiled a machine uh, the disinformation industry is. Yeah, well, instead of paying attention to that, let's think about the Let's think about the lives that were lost and the lives, the thousands of lives affected from the workers in Baltimore. Donnie O'Sullivan, thank you so much. An important report. Appreciate it. Fred? Right, and here's a different kind of reality check, as in the reality. New video showing what was happening on that Baltimore bridge just seconds before it collapsed into the river after a cargo ship rammed into it. A, a final few cars made it safely to the other side. Uh, but those flashing lights that you see on the bridge are vehicles believed to belong to the construction workers who did not make it off the bridge in time. And you can also see just to the right of the bridge, the cargo ship. You can see the lights there just seconds before it actually hit the pillar. Joining me right now, former NTSB investigator Charlie Pereira. Uh, good to see you, Charlie. So uh, the NTSB uh, chair, uh, Jennifer Hamadi, says that the investigation could take up to two years. Help us understand what will 
happen in that two year period. It would seem the focus is going to be on the vessel, right? These uh, reports of whether there was dirty fuel or why the steering mechanism simply failed. Uh, is it secondary? Uh, uh, the secondary portion of the investigation going to be the actual bridge um, and, and why it collapsed the way it did? Well, they're going to collect all of the facts uh, for every portion of the investigation. Uh, the boat, the uh, maritime side, the uh, highway side, uh, they're going to collect all of the information, uh, including uh, information about uh, what the Federal Highway Administration and the state of Maryland did uh, since the NTSB over the last 50 years uh, has investigated dozens of these and issued numerous recommendations over the last 50 years uh, calling for uh, states and the Federal Highway Administration to take a look at the risks posed by vessel strikes on bridges and uh, encouraging them to, uh, uh, to do something about it, such as protect these bridges and uh, uh, I guess in this case, the Federal Highway Administration in the state of Maryland decided not to act on this bridge, even though this is uh, probably uh, this and the Bay Bridge that goes from Annapolis to Kent Island are probably the two uh, most significant and at-risk bridges in terms of traffic exposure on a daily basis. Uh, so uh, hopefully the investigation will look at what or, or why the Federal Highway Administration and the state of Maryland didn't act on the NTSB recommendations over the last 50 years. Well, it's been stated that this investigation could take two years. Surely uh, there will be a, um, I guess, more of a pinpointing of the cause. What happened to that vessel well before that time, don't you think? Yeah, they're going to look at that. But in my eyes, that's just another data point. It, it doesn't really, you know, in the, in the big picture of transportation safety, uh, it doesn't really matter why it happened. Uh, we know that there are uh, an infinite number of reasons why these things can happen. Uh, bad fuel, drop a rudder, uh, intentional acts. There's always going to be some other reason, uh, an infinite number of solutions for uh, a large vessel like this to strike a critical bridge structure. And unless you put in place uh, protective devices uh, to prevent those impacts from occurring and the failure uh, to the bridge occurring from those impacts, you're always going to have these. It's just a matter of time and mm -hmm. statistical uh, uh, statistical probability until the accident. Mm -hmm. So from a safety point, it's very frustrating to see action not be taken to uh, mitigate uh, when, the, when these impacts do occur. Mm -hmm. All right, so that, that focal point of the uh, infrastructure of the bridge, the key bridge did not have any redundancy. It's a fracture critical bridge. Help better explain what that means. I mean, it, it, it all collapses when a portion of it is compromised. But how do you see uh, this um, latest example perhaps uh, being important when trying to construct uh, bridges of our future? Well, there's different ways that you can uh, design it, just like on airplanes. You know, airplanes have triple redundant systems and double redundant systems, such that if one fails, they have other backups that continue the safe operation. And the same thing with a bridge. Uh, you can either design it so that uh, if a ship strikes one and takes one out, uh, there's still enough structural rigidity uh, and support to uh, not cause the entire bridge to collapse. Or you can design it like they did on this one uh, with a single point failure and then do everything you can to protect that uh, point by uh, you know, building uh, a variety of uh, structural protection mechanisms uh, mm -hmm. to prevent the uh, single point failure from occurring. And the NTSB uh, has uh, delved into recommendations in that regard for almost 50 years now uh, as a result of numerous bridge strikes like this that they've investigated in the past in right. Florida, Georgia, uh, yeah, elsewhere. Very good. All right, we'll leave it there. Charlie Pereira, uh, formerly of the NTSB, thank you so much.